Let's take a look now at this Bradshaw Limited question. It's a schedule of non-current assets question that came from the ACCN3 paper back in June 2017. So this is a potential topic these days for 7127 paper one for AQA. Um, and I'm sure it applies to other exam boards as well. So let's just have a look at the information we're given. It says that the directors of Bradshaw Limited have provided the following incomplete schedule of non-current assets for the year ended 31st of May 2017. Now, just to recap what a schedule of non-current assets actually is, it's um, a statement that shows how the net book value has been arrived at um, in the statement of financial position. So when a, a PLC, for example, produces some published accounts on the statement of financial position, there'll just be one total for the net book value of all the non-current assets. It'll just be PPE, property, plant and equipment, and one number. So this schedule of non-current assets breaks that down for users of the financial statements. And the layout is always the same. So we put the categories of assets and usually just like on the statement of financial position when we're listing them, it's in the order of least liquidity. And usually there would be a total column at the end. Um, but for exam purposes, just to keep it clearer, um, they usually don't put a total column in. Um, so going across the top is the category of assets. Um, and then going down here, we've got three sections. The first one is cost. So we're going to break down the original cost of the assets. Then we're going to show the depreciation. And this is the depreciation provision. So we're going to be coming up with a total figure. This was the provision brought forward from the beginning of the financial year, in this case, 1st of June 2016. And we're going to explain what's changed in that depreciation provision during the year. And then we're going to calculate the net book value. So we're given the figures at the 1st of June. What we're trying to work out is what's going to be there at the 31st of May 2017. Okay, same for the depreciation. So we're going to try and work out what's there at the 31st of May 2017. And the net book value also at the 31st of May 2017. So when you're doing one of these questions, I would always kind of start with this part, fill in as much as you can sort of down the side and then start looking at the numbers. Okay, so there are only three things that could potentially happen in the cost section. We could have additions, so we could buy new assets. We could have disposals, so assets that we sell or part exchange during the year. And we could also have revaluation. So those are the three things that could happen within the cost section. OK, so that's our kind of headline there. In the depreciation section, again, we could have three things. We're always going to have a charge for the year, but we also might have to get rid of some depreciation um, in here. So we can have eliminated on disposal. So if we sell a non-current asset, we have to get rid of not only the cost up here, but also the um, provision for depreciation to date on that asset. And Remember that if we revalue any assets, usually land and buildings, then um, we need to get rid of any depreciation to date because if we're revaluing them, we're revaluing them upwards. So we need to eliminate any depreciation on that revaluation because it hasn't actually depreciated. If we're revaluing it, it's appreciated, it's gone up in value. Okay, and then the net book value is going to be the difference between whatever we come up with here, the cost minus the depreciation to date. OK, then I would have a look through the additional information and see what we can um, glean from that. Um, so land and buildings were revalued to 805,000 on the 1st of June. So that's right at the beginning of the financial year to reflect current market prices. Following the revaluation, they will then be depreciated over the remaining estimated useful life. OK, so we'll be thinking, well, OK, what is the remaining estimated useful life. It tells us down here that land and buildings are depreciated using the straight line method over 50 years. So that was the original useful life. So we're going to need to work out how much useful life is, um, is left. So it was originally 50 years. Um, and we're going to be able to do that by using this depreciation to date chart. So we'll be able to work out how many years we've owned the building for. And we'll come back to that in a minute. We've got new plant and machinery that's been purchased on the 1st of March 2017 at a cost of 74,000. So we're going to need to make sure that we put that up in the cost section there. They've sold a motor vehicle on the 28th of February 2017 for 15,675. Well, that's actually going to be irrelevant. That's the sale proceeds. You'll need that in your statement of cash flows, but not in a schedule of non-current assets. You'd also need it to try and work out the profit or loss on disposal. It does tell us that it had been originally purchased for um, £32,000 on the 1st of December 
2014. And other than these um, adjustments, no other non-current assets were purchased or sold during the year. We also need to have a little glance at the depreciation policy just to see what we're dealing with. And this is the heart sink moment. It says that all depreciation is charged on a month by month basis. Now, it's much better, much easier to calculate when they tell you that the depreciation um, well, assets are depreciated uh, for a full year in the year that they're bought and none in the year of disposal, because that means we can just lump everything in together and deal with the depreciation. When depreciation is charged on a month by month basis, you've potentially got three lots of depreciation for any one of these assets. So where there have been additions and disposals, you've got depreciation on assets that have been there throughout the whole year. So that's anything that was there at the beginning of the year, minus any disposals. You're then going to have to work out depreciation on assets that were bought during the year and you'll have to look and see when they were bought and then just time apportion those accordingly and the same for any assets that have been disposed of during the year we're going to have to provide a part year depreciation for those so as I said potentially three lots of depreciation going into this one figure here charge for the year because it's month by month we can't just lump it all in okay um, we already looked at this um, earlier land and buildings um, are depreciated using the straight line method over 50 years um, so if we divide this 625,000 pounds by 50 let's do that now that tells us that the annual depreciation let's just make a little note here annual depreciation move the paper up annual depreciation is 12,500 now if we look at how much depreciation we've got to date 187500 divided by 12500 will tell us the number of years so 187 and a half over 12 and a half means that they've already had it for 15 years so what that means for us is when we're doing this year's depreciation we've got 35 years remaining okay so we'll come back to that when we sort out the uh the schedule in a moment plant and machinery is reducing balance 25 percent per annum and motor vehicles are using the reducing balance also um, at a rate of 20 percent per annum okay now the fact that it's reducing balance as well means that if we're trying to work out depreciation to date on an asset like on the motor vehicle that's been sold we're going to have to do it year by year we can't just do it you know one amount times three or however many years we've owned it for. Okay, so that's an assessment of what we need to do. Let's get on with um, doing some calculations. So the first thing I'm going to sort out is the revaluation of assets. Now remember that when an asset is revalued, any depreciation needs to be eliminated. So these land and buildings, the first thing we need to do is get rid of, I'm popping it in brackets there, get rid of the depreciation to date. So that will be reversed out into the income statement. It hasn't lost money, it's gained money. So then we're looking at how much this has gone up by. So it's gone from 625,000 to 805,000. So that is an increase. I should be able to do this in my head. Um, an increase of 180,000 pounds. So we're going to pop that into the revaluation line there. So that asset has gone up by 180,000. So it's now at valuation 805,000. So now I've just got to sort out the depreciation. Now, if you remember, I worked out down here that we had 35 years remaining. It started at 50 years. Um, the annual depreciation, if we divide the cost of the asset, the 625 by 50, gave us 12,500 per annum. So that means that they've already done 15 years worth of depreciation, which by my reckoning leaves 35 years. So what we're going to do now is take the 805,000. I'll just do this working down here. 805,000 divided by 35 years means that the annual depreciation is £23,000. So that's going to go into our charge for the year and also into the total at the bottom. And then the net book value will be the 805 minus the 23, which is £782,000. OK, so that's the first column dealt with. And then we can move on to the plant and machinery. So let's have a look at that then. Um, we've got some new plant and machinery that's been bought for £74,000. So let's pop that into the additions. But unfortunately, it wasn't bought on the first day of the financial year. Okay, It was bought on the 1st of March 2017. The first day of the financial year 
was the 1st of June. So we're going to have to work out the depreciation. There were no disposals, no revaluations. So we've got 320 plus 74. We've got 394,000 pounds worth there. But the depreciation, if you remember, is on a reducing balance basis. So let's do a working here. So for plant and machinery depreciation is going to be as follows. So we've got the assets that were there all year. So £320,000 worth of cost minus 198500 Okay, so these are the assets that are there all year. 320 minus 198500 leaves us with 121500 And we're doing reducing balance basis depreciation at a rate of 25%. Okay, so 25% of that is 30,375. So those are the assets that were remaining all year. And then we've got assets bought in the year. Okay, which is going to be the 74,000 pounds. We're going to do 25% depreciation and then we're going to time apportion that. So those were bought on the 1st of March. So we've got March, April, May. So only three twelfths for that one. So 74,000 times 25% times three twelfths, 4,625. So if we add both of those together, we've got 35,000 pounds worth of depreciation. Okay, so we can pop that straight into here. So charge for the year, 35,000. And then there's nothing else. We can just add that to the depreciation put forward. So 233,500. And then the net book value will be the difference between those two figures, which is 160,500. Okay, so that's the second column done. Now we come on to the motor vehicles. Now this is a bit messier because there's been a disposal um, part way through the year. So we're going to have to work out um, how much the asset cost. Well, I think we're told that it's told that it's originally £32,000. So we can take that straight off. Okay, but we need to work out how much depreciation has been provided to date on the motor vehicle. So let's have a look. Motor vehicle depreciation. Let's sort that one out. So we've got a disposal and that cost. £32,000 on the 1st of December 2014. Now, the way I would do this is to deal with it on a year-by-year -year basis. So try and work out what happened in the first financial year. So we've got the period from the 1st of December 2014 up to the first year end, which would have been the 31st of May 2015. Let's get the years right. What a mess. So that's December, January, February, March, April, May. So that's six months. So 32,000 times we're doing 20% depreciation times six twelfths. So 32,000 times 20% times six over 12 or half it is 3,000. 200. Okay, so that's the first financial year. Then we've got the year ended 31st of May 2016. So that's the difference between these two. So it's the net book value 32,000 minus 3200 is 28,800. And we're doing a full year's depreciation there. So a whole 20% is 5760. So the depreciation up to the 31st of May 2016 is the total of these two. Okay, so 5760 plus 3200 is 8960. Okay, and that's going to be quite an important figure we'll see in a minute. We've also got to do for the period ended, um, when did we sell it? We got rid of it on the 28th of February 2017. So we've got June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, which is nine months. So we're going to do the net book value which is going to be, what do we have, 32,000 was the cost, minus 8,960 to date. So 23,040 times 20% times 9 twelfths, which is 3,456. Okay, so the depreciation to date on that asset is 12 
416. Okay, so we can, let's just get rid of the, um, so we've already taken out the cost and then eliminated on disposal is going to be the total amount of depreciation, 12,400. And 16. Okay, so that's the disposal dealt with. Now we've got to work out the charge for the year. Okay, now what we need to remember is that we've got this depreciation on the asset that's been disposed of. So we, we need to include that within the charge for the year. So let's have a look at assets. So we can put in assets disposed of. I'm going to put C above 3456. And then assets remaining all year. Oops, I can't write all year. We've got the cost, which is 95,000 minus that 32,000 disposal. So 95 minus 32 is 63,000 of cost. And then we've got depreciation, because we're going to have to take into account the depreciation. We've got 46,750 brought forward up here. But we're going to take away not the 12,416, but we're going to use this 89. 60 because 8960 is what was there up until the 1st of June 2016. We haven't yet included that 3456. That's going to be included in the charge for the year. So we just need to take into account the 8960. So 46750 minus 8960 means that we've still got 37790 of that depreciation provision left. So that relates to assets that haven't been disposed of. So the net book value of assets that were there all year is the difference between those two, which is 25,210. And then if we do 20% depreciation, that gives us 5,042. So the charge for the year is going to be that 3456, oops, 3456 plus the 5042 which is 8,498. So that's probably the worst part of this question, actually, sorting out the motor vehicle depreciation and realising that that 3456 isn't included in the 46,750. So we only want to be taking off the 8,960 when we're trying to work out how much depreciation um, is left in there. So let's pop these figures in then. So we've got the charge for the year was the 8,498. And the depreciation that we're eliminating, so the 8498 does include the 3456, and then the 12416 is all the depreciation to date. So we've got, what have we got there? 95 minus 32 is our 63,000. That's what's left in the cost. And then 46,750 plus 8498 minus 12416 leaves us with 42,832 in the depreciation provision and a net book value of 20,168. Okay, so we got there in the end. Hopefully that's made some sense. Um, as I said, this is the most difficult part and that's the bit that's gonna carry the most marks. In fact, I think I have the mark scheme over here. So if we have a look at how many marks you get for those, those calculations. So just one here, um, two marks for working out the depreciation charge for the year on that um, land and buildings figure that have been revalued. Um, two marks for the depreciation on the plant and machinery, but there's a total of five marks available here. So it is very heavily weighted in favour of the motor vehicles. So as I said, that is quite a tricky part. You might want to rewatch that video um, and hopefully it will make some sense. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Do keep the ideas coming. If there's any questions that you're struggling with, you'd like me to record a video, just drop me a message. Thanks very much for watching.